Hello and welcome to this Decode video lesson. This is part 4 of our series on games with Flashpunk. Last time, we set up the game to a stage where we could control our player with the keyboard. I'll briefly run this, just to recap. Now, keyboard input is great, but what if we want to control things with the mouse? With mouse input. And that's really important to cover too. Now, the thing to note here is that they create very different mechanics and have very different uses. We have keyboard input that's good for games that games or applications even that we want to solely make revolve around the keyboard. But the thing about the mouse is that it's a pointing device. It's its location that actually makes the game more dynamic. And the, and the other thing about the mouse is that if we want to convert our game to a mobile device which runs on a touch screen, it's much easier to convert mouse clicks to touches than it is to convert keyboard presses to touches. So if you have the goal of making a mobile game, then mouse input, of course, will make your job a whole lot easier because you can compile Flash develop games to mobile. Anyway, let's get to it. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to make our player be able to shoot. So the way we do that is we're going to make a bullet entity and give it a bullet graphic and then give it speed properties that we can set to make it move at a speed and direction that we want to move it in. And then on every click in the game, we're going to make a new instance of that bullet entity and then make it head towards the mouse. And then lastly, we're going to draw a sort of line of sight to finish the whole thing off. So I've started by drawing a red circle in some, in some pixels. Um, it's not very interesting. I might, I might touch it up a bit by sort of giving it an impulse effect. Ah, oh, I really am quite the artist. And yeah, that'll do. I will save that in our assets folder, which is where we keep all our graphics. And I'm going to name it bullet.png just as I've already done here. So now I'm going to click save and then it'll give me some options. I'm going to click OK. Remember, you don't have to use paint.net to do your image editing. You can use any graphical editing software that you like. So I'm going to go back into Flash Develop and I'm going to go to this project panel on the right here, right click it and then click Add New Class, which is, should be sort of familiar to us by now. We're going to make a new one. I'm going to call it Bullet. And just like our player, we're going to base it on the Entity class. Then I'm going to click OK, and then it will generate all this stuff for us. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code from the player class because that's what embedded the that's what embedded the image into the player class. I'm not going to type it again. I'm just going to copy it from the bullet class and rename the appropriate things. So I'm going to change player to bullet because that's the name of the file, and I'm going to change the constant name to bullet as well just to make my life a little bit easier. And then, just as we did before, we're going to go graphic equals new image bullet, which will make the image that we just created the graphic of all of these entities. And as you can see, uh, Flash developers automatically imported the image class. Next, we're going to center the image graphic just as we did on the player class. So that's graphic as image dot center hour, which will make sure the image is centered on its location in X and Y. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to add uh, two speed values. Now, just as we have X and Y coordinates, which indicates our position on the screen, we can have X and Y speeds that indicate how fast we are moving. Now, just like we had with the player, with the keyboard input, we would say that to move right, we want to add 5 to X every, um, every frame, 30 times per second. Now, what if we change that 5 and the 5 for the Y, and we made it our invariable? Then we can say, well, you can add however many you want every second um, and either the X or the Y based on a number that we can set programmatically. And that's exactly what we want to do. So we're going to type in public 
public var x speed, you know, speed in the x, make it of type number, so that's what that colon means, uh, what kind of variable it is, and we're going to set it to zero. And then we're going to set another variable public var y speed number equals zero, and that does the exact same thing but in the y. Now the next thing we've got to do is just make these variables do something. So we're going to override the update function, public function update, just like we did with the player, and then we are going to we're going to add x speed to x and y speed to y. X plus equals x speed and y plus equals y speed. So now there are these properties for the bullet object and if we make an instance of it, if we set x speed or y speed, it will move that many pixels per frame and we can change that as much as we like. Now that allows us to get into the mouse input part. And the mouse input is pretty much just as simple as the keyboard input. We have, and we're going to make an if statement, if that, then do this, I'm going to type if input dot mouse pressed and that asks um, if the mouse button was pressed this frame just like the input dot pressed function but it's not a function it's just a boolean so that means we don't need to put brackets at the end and then I'm going to put in this exactly what we want to do first I'm going to create a temporary variable called bullet and I'm going to have it of type bullet so we're going to say we're going to make a new temporary variable which we're, which we're only going to use for the time being in this little bracket in this little part here that is of this type bullet of that entity that we just made and we're going to make it a new instance let's say we're going to make a new bullet to put into this bullet variable and that way we can change things up so we can set bullet dot x to mouse x sorry to input dot mouse x and then we can set bullet dot y equals input dot mouse y and basically all that's happening here is we're taking the x and y coordinates of the mouse and we're sending them to the bullet uh, we set well, sorry we're sending the bullet coordinates to them now we can take a look at what this does and the player can still move around but when I click nothing happens now that's because we didn't add this bullet object to the world. So all you have to do to do that is go world dot add um, bullet. Now luckily all entities have a variable world that is reference that references the current world that they're in. So we want to add to the same world that the player is in the bullet. And now when I click um, I get that bullet graphic appearing all over the screen where my mouse is which is nice but that's not exactly what we want because we want the bullets to move and come out of the player and head towards the mouse now to do that first we have to make the player the bullets coordinates the same as the players so we just change mouse x to x and mouse y to y so now we're saying put the bullet where the player is and then we want to set these speed properties so bullet dot x speed equals now we're just what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between the player's position and the mouse's position to get our um, to get our x speed and to do that it's just a subtraction operation so what we do is we go input dot mouse x minus x and then for uh, for y speed it's much the same but with the y coordinate instead of the x one input dot mouse y minus y now this will be much too fast um, if I play what will happen is well you barely even see it it sort of, sort of flickers on the screen for a little bit if I put it close you can actually see it you can actually see it moving um, but the thing is as you get further away um, the bullet gets faster, which is okay. Um, that's something that we can that we can work with. But ah, appears the game has stopped responding. There we go. 
um, but it's too fast. So what we can do is we can just slow it down a little bit. And to do that, we can just divide it. By an arbitrary value, I'm picking 40. So this um, forward slash simply means divide by. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it to 1 40th of that speed that we were getting before. And that means the bullets should move at a much more normal speed. See, there we go. The bullets are moving towards the mouse at a speed that seems normal. And I can still move him around and I can shoot at the same time. And if I had more fingers, I could sort of do the is big at the same time <laughs> as they're moving around. Maybe this is a reason to move to WASD uh, movement instead of the arrow keys, but we won't do that now. The last thing I'm going to do is put in a sort of line of sight thing. Um, it won't be as useful as uh, our typical line of sight because it'll only draw a line from the player to the mouse. Drawing a line that goes through the mouse is a little more complicated and something for another day. So what I'll do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the, up, uh, the render function for the player. Now what this function does is it draws all the stuff that needs to be drawn um, in, in, in the player and what that is is just that player graphic. But what we want to do is we also want to draw a line. So first I'm going to call super.render which says execute the render function of the super class. So our graphic still gets, still gets drawn. But as well as that I'm going to call another function and first I need to import a new class. I've already imported it. It is uh, net.flashpunk.utils.draw and this class will um, this class basically has a whole lot of um, drawing utilities and one of them is to draw a line. So we're just going to go draw dot line and then we're going to we're going to put in some coordinates. Now the first coordinate is the x position of the, the, the line starts on which is our player position so x then the starting y position which is our player y and then the point where it ends so we're just going to put in we're going to put in uh, input dot mouse x and then for the ending y position we're going to put in input dot mouse y and that will draw our line for us and when I hit play we see a line being drawn from the player to the mouse. And if I move the mouse, the line moves as well. If I move the player, it also moves. And I can click and run around and do all sorts of different things. Try playing around with that last argument, which is the color. It's an interesting one. Um, it's in hexadecimal. So you write 0x and then a string of six numbers. Uh, or six hexadecimal numbers. Um, I won't go into it in the moment, but the, each set of two numbers represents a different color. So for example, FF means full red, then 22 means a little bit of green, and 00 means no blue. So red, green, blue. It's a little complicated. You should do some research on that for more information. Um, we'll just see what that color looks like for the sake of it. So it's a sort of orangey, very ready um, color. Okay, so that's all we have planned for today. That's mouse input, and that allows us to do things like shoot bullets, or um, probably very important would be things like pressing buttons in your game and interacting in other ways like that. Next, we're going to cover collision. So these bullets need to do something when they hit something else. So we're going to add some enemies to our game, and then be able to shoot them down as they try and get us. That's what we'll be doing in the next lesson. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you stick around for the next one.